We're at REIT Week 2010 in Chicago with Stephen Grimes, President and CEO of Inland Western Retail. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, with linens and things in Circuit City and other companies folding and leaving the retail space, you've got a lot of vacancies. What are you folks doing to fill those slots? That's an interesting question because there are a lot of people that were impacted very uh, early on in the game by the vacancies attributable to linens and Circuit City. Uh, we spent a significant amount of time in anticipation of those bankruptcies, really positioning our portfolio in our centers and specifically the space that we have available for the backfill of that center in the early part of 08, mid part of 08, and taking that into the end of 08. Um, so we were able to capitalize on the momentum that we have with existing national retailers that are actually looking to relocate and upgrade their space. Now, have you seen a, a shift in the trend in the types of anchors you're putting in the centers now? Has there been one particular area that you've seen, that you've seen come in? Our goal through this whole process has been to really make sure that we upgrade the credit uh, mix that we have in our particular portfolio. And when you actually look at where we were in March of 08, or where we are in March of 2010, you'll see a significant upgrade in the credit uh, that we have in our portfolio in our top 10 tenancy. Uh, so we have seen a focus on value. We very much know how to play with the focus on value. And uh, it's a really good complement for a landlord and tenant for us to be in business together. Now you have this joint venture with Rio Can. Can you talk a little bit about that and if that might be a shift for you folks, if that's something you're going to do more of in the future? I think realistically it is a very good way of definitely showing our market dominance in particular markets that we have the ability to actually own, operate, and manage centers. And it's obviously very lucrative for folks that actually come in and lucrative for us. When we have the ability to retain the fee structure, utilize the infrastructure we have here in the U.S., and benefit uh, some Canadian uh, capital that's come in the door, we definitely would like to expand on that particular uh, aspect of the business. Uh, there does come a point where you're too large in the joint venture business. We don't want to become a fund manager, uh, but we do want to be very selective in the institutions that we partner with because we feel as though, A, it's a very good endorsement of our platform, and B, uh, we really focus on the longevity of the partnership that we can gain by certain partners as opposed to just simply doing it with many others. So the last question I have for you is actually what question are you getting most from your investors these days? When is our dividend going to increase? We were, I would have to say, probably the first of the non-listed REITs to cut the dividend. We did it for obvious reasons. We did it for appropriate reasons, and we reaped the benefit of doing that. Uh, but the focus now is definitely on the increase of that dividend. And that all along comes with that is where's the leasing activity? When's the leasing going to hit, <clears throat> both economic and physical? So our investors, albeit retail, are getting a little bit more savvy on the tenancy mix that we have in our portfolio. So I would say our number one question comes around leasing and tenancy. Stephen, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you very much for having me. For REIT.com, I'm Jason Flynn.